The impact of William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, The Cartoon Kings of the 20th Century by Ben Ross William Hanna and Joseph Barbera are responsible for many of the classic cartoons that we know and love today, and it's time to give them the respect they deserve. Henry, you've got to help me. Do you have any idea where George could be? When talking about the growth of animation and cinema and television, there's plenty of names you could list off. Pixar, Disney, Warner Bros, Studio Ghibli, etc. While all of these companies have made strides in their contributions to the field and to the childhoods of many, there's one company that stands out among its peers in terms of its output and reverence, Hanna-Barbera. That's right, Brad. I second the emotion. Would you wait till we've gone? I hate to see cavemen cry. Created by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera, Hanna-Barbera absolutely dominated the TV animation fields for decades, creating a plethora of shows that are universally loved. With cartoons like The Yogi Bear Show and Scooby-Doo Where Are You, their reign over American television and Saturday morning cartoons is unlike anything else. The FBI okay, galloping all the way, here comes Big Brother Bro! However, by the 1990s, the company fell drastically from its place as the king of animation and television. Now it finds a home on Cartoon Network and Boomerang, where its properties still air as either reruns and remakes. So, how did one of the biggest animation studios in history go from being at the top of their game to where they are now? Nobody wants me. And why are they as influential and respected as they are today? As the new HBO Max series Jellystone premieres this week, a series based on the characters of the past from Hanna-Barbera, it's important to look at the effect the company had on animation in entertainment history. Hanna-Barbera's impact on television starts in the middle of the golden age of American animation. The birth of an iconic partnership. Well, first of all, it has, doesn't seem like a long time. When we think <laughs> of it, all of a sudden it's 30 years and we're celebrating, but we're delightful. William Hanna and Joseph Barbera first met working in the animation unit at MGM Studios during the late 1930s. Looking for something new to create, they eventually decided on a story about two equal characters who are always in conflict with each other, as stated by Barbera. Together, they made their first cartoon, 1940's Puss Gets the Boot. And became the first theatrical short in what would soon become the long-running and ever-popular series, Tom and Jerry. Both men directed the short and continued to direct the series for the next two decades. Hanna, a superb animator, often supervised the series' animation, while Barbera, a gifted storyteller, worked on the stories and other pre-production aspects. Throughout their time working on Tom and Jerry, they proved to be successful, earning seven Academy Awards and being nominated for five others. They were proven to be a great duo who knew the workings of how to make a funny cartoon and great comedic characters. This would be useful for them in the future as things would take a turn for the worse by the late 1950s. A new beginning. You can tune in this wonderful new Westinghouse television set with just one hand like this. Throughout the 50s, a change occurred in the entertainment industry that was both a blessing and a curse for Hannah and Barbara. The rise of the TV. As TV emerged to become a dominant media outlet, it became less profitable to create new animated theatrical shorts. MGM had realized this and also found that re-releasing old shorts proved to be just as profitable. Thus, in 1958, MGM decided to close down their animation department, leaving both men out of a job. This isn't how I pictured it. Luckily for them, during their last year at the studio, they had begun the process of starting their own animation company under the name of HB Enterprises. They became the first animation studio to create cartoons entirely for TV and gradually began growing as a company. 
By 1959, HB Enterprises had been rebranded into Hanna-Barbera Productions, Inc., and the company continued to see unparalleled success in television. Why don't you pick on somebody your own size? Their biggest win came with their 1960s series, The Flintstones, a show that became the first ever animated show to air in a primetime slot. This was the beginning of their own golden age. Throughout the 1960s, they produced dozens of shows of different varieties, such as The Jetsons and Wacky Races. A hex on you, A hex on you. Their period of success all came from Hannah and Barbera's willingness to innovate, to change animation, and make it profitable on television. Changing animation forever. William Hanna and Joseph Barbera were able to take animated shorts that were usually expensive and thus safe for theatrical releases and get them to work as television shows. When making shorts for theaters, the budget per short is much higher than for TV, as more episodes are expected to be made over a shorter period of time. The production of film cartoons is long on routine and heavy with detail. And Working with a constrained budget allowed the two to push the concept of limited animation during production. Limited animation was all about finding ways to cut costs when animating a sequence. This would include reusing backgrounds or character movements rather than redrawing them later. When animating a character in this restricted style, animators would just move certain body parts like arms or legs and leave the rest of the shot static. Watch where you're throwing those banana skins! This allowed for only needing a few thousand drawings per short rather than the typical 20,000 plus drawings needed. It saved time, and it saved money. Their use of limited animation changed television forever in ways of cutting costs and making the mass production of cartoons much easier. As the company's reputation grew rapidly in the 60s, they began pumping out television shows left and right to capitalize on their success. Because of this, the birth of Saturday morning cartoons had begun. The studio created new action cartoons based off of both pre-existing properties, like Fantastic Four, and new characters and ideas, like Birdman and the Galaxy Trio. With the continuous creation of cartoons that would be released between the 1960s and the 1980s, these animated shows would be released on Saturday mornings and find popularity there, creating a new programming block that entertained children worldwide. Did it with my own little atom smasher. <laughs> what the? Ooh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Applause for the innovators. The full impact of William Hanna and Joseph Barbera is immeasurable in the worlds of TV and animation. They created one of the most famous and iconic cartoons of all time with their cat and mouse story Tom and Jerry, and never stopped there, going on to make some of the most well-known and beloved shows to ever grace the small screen. Despite the studio's eventual decline and absorption into Warner Bros. animation, they still created plenty of cartoons that were adored by the masses. Walk your police dog! Perhaps clean up this yeah, dirty alley. Now, as a member of a new studio, the company upholds its legacy with reruns of its old works, while also marching forward with the completion of new cartoons as well. Sadly, the two men weren't able to see how important their shows still are today. William Hanna passed in 2001, while Joseph Barbera passed in 2005. But their legacy lives on, and their contributions to further the field of animation will never be forgotten.